God's people say amen. amen. How y'all doing? Bless we serve a mighty great God uh -huh. that can do anything but fail. Thank the Lord for the opportunity to, to his house of worship to see everyone that put forth for that forgot to come this morning. I just want to be in a hurry to say praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You ain't got to have a reason every time. Just say it because you got a chance to say thank you, Lord. Amen. For all your many blessings. I always remember that I was going on in life. It's always a great time to praise the Lord. Amen. We're still moving along in our series, The Journey of Jesus. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And we'll be looking at verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 21. Verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 and 13. And the reason Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Just for a little while, I'd like to speak from the topic under new management. Under new management. For those of us who have lived a while, we have seen businesses come. The businesses go. Yeah, sometimes you decide people with John Burley tell me about stores that was here that I they hadn't seen since I've been here. This only used to be, in my mind, this only used to be. Because over time, a good idea can turn into a bad idea. So many people want to oh, get a food truck in. Want to start their own food company and all that until they see that the old head is a little bit too much more than they can buy. Yeah. And then you'll see a sign on the bulletin that says under new management. Yeah. The building is the same. The person inside is different. Yeah. I just I preached already. Yeah. The building is the same. Yeah. But what's on the inside is different. And we don't even have to look at businesses. Most of us can raise our hand and testify that the car or the house that we bought doesn't look the same as it did when we bought it. For some, they get the vehicle and they tip the windows and put some 24s, 26 or something. Put a little beat in the trunk. Make the CD play a little bit more fancier. Because now this car is under new management. Some buy a house and knock out a wall here and paint a new room there and add on a porch and see if we got enough room for a pool because this house is now under new management. It's not to say what was going on was wrong, but it just wasn't me. I want my house to reflect my personality. If I move into a house and the room is pink and I'm a man that, that, that room won't stay pink for long. We'll paint it blue, we'll paint it black, we'll play, paint it kiwi green, but we're gonna change the color because it don't fit our personality. Yeah. And oh, when we come up under the management of God, he gets on the inside and changes, even though the outside looks the same, he starts to mold us to what he wants us to look like. Yeah. Right. He, he, he changes our walk, he changes our talk, he, Changes our mindset so we can look more like him than the world. Come out from among them and be separated. Uh -huh. And we find Jesus in the deck. He is on his last week on earth. He is on his way to Calvary. Matthew 
21 starts off with his heroic entry into town to where they went and got a coat and brought it and the people put leaves in the way and they closed in the way and as he came they hollered out, Hosanna! Lord God of the highest. And, and it goes straight from there it says he goes from being praised to him going straight to the temple. And on his way to Calvary, he has to get some things straight. Yeah. It's just like us when we get ready to go out of town. I never understood the night before we go out of town, we had to clean the house. I'm like, Mama, we're not going to be here. <laughs> but we wanted to go and clean it so when we got back home, we ain't got nothing to do. And so Christ is on his way to Calvary. He's stopping off by the temple to clean it up on his way out of here. Yeah. So when he come back, he can look for a church without a spot. Oh, it all comes together. So he stops there and what he sees is not the original functionality of what the temple was supposed to be doing. I'll say that one more time. When he went and stopped, the temple was not functioning in the original function that it was there for. They were turning the temple into a place of gain of money and finances and wealth when it was supposed to be a house of prayer. Yeah. Oh, in 2022, there are some churches that are more into the doves and the money changes than it is on prayer. Uh -huh. For those who don't know what prayer is, prayer is our connection with God to where we can call them up and tell them what we want. Right. Yeah. There should be not one Christian that comes to church and leave without lifting us in prayer before they go. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, you should be praying every day. Yeah. But at least when you're in his house, you should talk to your father and tell him about what's going on in your life. He said, this is supposed to be a house of prayer. So it leads me to ask the question, what do churches look like today? Are we still making the main thing the main thing? And that's preaching, teaching, and praying, and not worrying about finances, budgets, and buildings? We got to get back to what God intended for the church to be because the church under new management. Yes, yes. Because right now the temple was under the management of the law. Christ is coming to die to put the temple under the management of grace. Yes. Because the law no man can stand. But Jesus came and abolished the law and gave us grace. And if you don't know what grace is, it's receiving something that you don't deserve. Yes. And mercy is holding back yes. what you do deserve. Grace and mercy is my best friend because it holds back. Is this some stuff Quentin should have went through? Mm -hmm. It's some places Quentin should have been. But mercy came along and moved it out the way and gave me some grace. Yeah. Right. Because Quentin also would say, some things I got I was supposed to have. Yeah. It's some places I've been I wasn't supposed to go. But all because of grace and mercy, Christ granted it to me because it's under new management. Mm -hmm. It seemed what he didn't want to see. And I pray that when the God gives a place where he sees what he wants to see. A house of prayer, a house of worship, a house of fellowship. When he comes and visits us, I want him to say, this church looks like it's a new ministry. Yes, yes. These people here love each other. Yeah. They look out for each other. Yes. They see out for each other. But you have some churches where one side of the church is mean, the other side of the church is happy. One side of the church is family, the other side of the church is folks. But now when we come into the house of the Lord, we're all still saved by grace. And if we are the new mansion, I can go up to Bruce and say, how you doing, man? Praise the Lord to see you in the house today because if I come in with a praise and you come in with a praise, after a while we're going to sound like uh, Psalms 100 and make a choice for the Lord. to the Lord. Because if you're under new management, the only thing you can do is come in and do what you're for. And there's two things in the text that happen when you're under new management. Two things in the text that happen when you're under new management. First, new management comes in and removes. New management comes in and removes. There's no, uh, there's no way to make a business profitable until you find out where you're coming up short. And there's two things that might have to happen. You have to remove problems, and sometimes you have to remove people. 
It's a show that me and Addis like to watch called Bar Rescue, where a man come in and got a lot of money and he, 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 he gets with the owner because the owner is failing and two or three months for filing bankruptcy. He goes in and he's trying to find out where the liabilities. The, the refrigerator ain't cold enough so you're losing food. The, 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 the little beer tap, the, the, the beer ain't coming out cold enough so you're losing customers. So he has to find the problems so he can fix them. And oh, when Christ comes into our life, he finds the problems so he can fix them. But the thing is, we're different than the business. We hold on to our problems. There's some people, if they have problems, they wouldn't have nothing to talk about. So soon as you call, oh, Lord. What they ain't doing good. Them people there, you get about two, three minutes out of me, and I'm getting off the phone. Because their down uh trying attitude will jump through the phone on you. Make they know you over there complaining. When Christ comes into our life, he removes problems. And all problems are not at work. All problems are not at church. Some problems in your house. Some problems in your family. But Christ said, if you cannot say, Father, a mother, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. And if your father, your mother, your family is a problem, when you want to do magic, God will remove them. That's why you got to be careful. When you ask God to remove your problems, you find out they don't. Lord, move. Take anything around me that shouldn't be. You come home, everybody go. He said, you sure that's what you want? Because when you want a new management, it doesn't matter what old management did. It, it, it's eradicated because someone new is in town. I got scripture with it. When, when Nicodemus came to Jesus in John chapter 3 by verse 7, he said, Lord, or not that I say unto thee, he must be born again. You got to change and from what he was born because we was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But when we born again, we are born to have salvation. We are born into the Christ family because now we are under new management. That's why he's trying to hear nobody say, I was born like that. You was born like that. That's why you must be born again. Because there is, as he told that, no way to get to the kingdom of heaven until you succumb to Christ's management. There's no way for us to get from hell from earth to glory until we succumb to Christ's management. And the reason why I say succumb because he's not going to vote on you. He's not going to pull a kick though. Everybody get on the floor. No. I stand at the door and knock. If any man would, would like me to come in, I would suck with him and he would me. The only way you can get him, you got to accept him. He ain't going to hit you over the head. But listen, when he comes in, he's going to start doing what only God can do. He's going to remove some thoughts. He's going to remove some feelings. He's going to remove some friends. He's going to remove some foes because you're under the management. Caesar said, say, I looked at my hands. And my hands looked good. I looked at my feet and they did too. Oh, what a wonderful change. And it only comes when we are under new management. First, he has to remove some problems. Second, he has to remove some people. I must testify. Sometimes it's hard to accept the people God is removing from your life. You've invested time, you've invested feelings, you've invested money, but when God shows you it won't like a duck, a quack like a duck, it's a duck. But you'd be surprised because that'd be the one, the friend that always come through. That'd be the, that'd be the home girl that always gets to the phone. But it's levels to this. And some levels you got to pack a little light on. Some levels you got to throw off some stuff. When you see a ship that's, that's sinking, they got to start throwing stuff overboard so they can continue to float. Yeah. And who's sinking? 
because they don't want to drop some stuff. Whose life is getting turned upside down because you're trying to hold on to some weight that God's trying to free you from. It's tough. It's hard. Because you love them. But if they're not beneficial to the kingdom, they gotta go. God, as you see in the text, he said he removed. And God cast he will get rid of whatever stuck in your roof. That's why we turn over John 15. He said, I am a true man. And my father is the husband man. He didn't break that bad in me a check bad for me. He didn't that bad in me a purge and, and cast it to the fire and they are burned. Christ cuts on us sometimes. Yeah. He, he don't do it to hurt you. He do it to grow you. Yeah. Because any of us that had a God know there's some stuff that go in the God that, that starts to grow for the stuff that you want. Grass go way faster than tomatoes. Yeah. But to get the tomatoes to grow, you got to cut out some stuff. Yeah. You got to dig up some stuff. You got to remove some stuff all, all, all the way out because even if you leave it hanging around, it'll root it in and come all, all back up. You got to remove it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm from the country, in the, in, in the cotton field, it's called Johnson grass. Yeah. You go out there with that Johnson grass and pull it up and just sit it down to the side, you come back to that stand straight on back up. Because it'll root back in. And some of us got problems in our lives right there. We try to step away and step away. But we don't remove it. We just put it to the side. They say, no, we step back. We step back. And now we back in the game from the same breath. God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do it again. I'm right back here on my knees asking you, Christ, get me out of it. Here are some problems. But when you're under new management, you got to accept it because if you are under new management, that must mean what you was doing before didn't matter. It must be the plan that you was on before wasn't good enough. That's why I tell some people, try Jesus. You done gave him the bet for all them years and you ain't made it nowhere. The least you can do is give him a try and see where he goes. And I'm here to tell you, he'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll let you know that he is your own when you're under him. New management. Huh? Yes, How about that? Yes, Two things that happen under new management, they remove. Second thing they do, they restore. They remove and they restore. I've seen businesses that was getting ready to crumble but got the right uh, manager in the building and that business now has a strong name because the new management restored his name. Christ came in and restored order at the temple. He said, my house is to be called the house of prayer. Now, don't get the people wrong. Back in this time, they were still sacrificing, so they didn't have to have some certain animals and stuff to go in. But these people are, are parked outside in the Gentile court because the Gentiles could go into the temple. So since they could go in, they would start saying, hey man, this is the dove right here, this $15 dove, it might not cost them $3. <laughs> they was extorting folks. They was not doing what the thus said the Lord. They was giving out some animals that was not according to the way. They was lame and blind. And the Lord said he wanted a, a, a sacrifice without a spot or blemish. So he said, all you guys out here doing has nothing to do with what I built the temple for. I built it to restore people. Because you know in the Old Testament, that young lady, she was in the temple when she started crying because she couldn't get pregnant with that baby. Yeah. It, 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 it was David in the Psalms, and it was headed to the temple, and he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He removes and he restores. When I met Christ, I was empty, but now I've been restored. I was down and he picked me up. I was broke. He put a little money in my pocket. He restores. But you have to be under his management. Because there's some people that are looking for his benefits, but not looking for his management. 
There's some people that want his benefits, but they don't want his management. I, I want all your blessings. I, I, I want all your favor. I want all your grace. But I don't want to love my enemy as I love myself. I, I want you to come see about me in the midnight hour, but I don't want to seek ye first the kingdom of God. I want all the good stuff without all that other stuff. But I'm here to tell you, you can't have one without the other. You can't get God's benefits without him being your business owner. Because our bodies have become the temple. Yeah. The Holy Spirit resides in us that makes us the temple. So as you go through the week, what in my life, in my temple, God, do you need to remove? And what do you need to restore? What it is in me that that's, that's stunned my growth to be as much as I can be for you? And what am I doing right to where you can keep on stirring up the gift that I can be better? Because the Christ that we serve can't be seen in the world unless they see it in us. We are walking billboards. We are walking mannequins for Christ. When they see us, they should see Jesus. Because we are under new management. Now this may follow their ears because it may be somebody that's not in the business with us. But I'm on the lower side. Come hell or high water, I'm with Jesus. Because he's already cleaned me up. And is continuing to clean me up. Because you won't ever be fully clean. <laughs> Christ will be continuing to work on us until the day of redemption. So don't get down when you fall. You still gonna fall. But what you gonna do after you fall? You gonna stay in it and wallow? Or you gonna get up and let God restore you. Take and pray, Lord, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. That can't be done unless he's on the inside. That's why they had a temple, they had an ark, and he was, that was the, the, uh, the globe of Christ was in the temple. But when Christ came, there was no more sacrifices and our bodies became the temple. So when you somewhere you don't supposed to be, the spirit there with you. That's why you ain't comfortable. That's why you gotta get your drink and go around the house to drink. Because the spirit is in you. You can't just leave with the pound and say, I'll be right back. I'm gonna hang out with my friends for a couple hours, spirit, I'll be right back. No, I'm going with you. Because the more uncomfortable he makes you, the more he'll be like, you know what, girl, let me get over here. Because he's in you. That's why you're the ball game and everybody cussing, you can't say what you want to say. Because he's in you. Don't, don't feel bad. That means he's working it out in you to where when you go places, you ain't got to go there no more because God fulfills you. You ain't got to say some of that stuff no more because God will ride on your tongue. I ain't telling you what I've heard. I'm telling you what I know. Stop giving everybody a piece of your life, so you won't have no more. Because he'll remove and he will restore. That's the only reason why he is on his way to Calvary to restore man back to Christ. Because our relationship with Christ is a symbol of the cross. We have a vertical relationship from us to God. And we have a horizontal relationship for me to you. And you can't be friends with God and not be friends with me. And I can't be friends with you and not be friends with God. We got to have the whole cross-shaped gospel. Because he died and rose to put us under the management. If you want to live all alone, praise the Lord. But I want to live on the grace. I want to know I can get on my knees and cry to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me and he'll forgive me. Ask him to restore it. He'll restore it. Lord, whatever is there that shouldn't be taken out of here, take it out. But we have to be accepting to his will. Accepting to his way. 